little Alan cry and whimper more. So I was like... <laughs> <laughs> You've certainly come a long way from Artsmuir. If you're to stay, my word at Fraser's Ridge is law. Why are you super sassy? Uh, well, again, because what I said, I, 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 don't, I don't take myself too seriously. I especially don't take... The, the, the actual shows too seriously. Um, and I just think, I, I, I think I tried a very fine line. I have, listen, I will say, and I know they're on the call, listening, <laughs> like God, omnipresent as they always are, but I've been told off so many times by stars while shooting season six. But I, but I, I wear it as a badge of honor. <laughs> I, I, I've, had many, I've had many a call from publicity from stars and God, I even, I even got so far, Max, I even got so far, far Max has been told off by the executive producers at one point. So listen, I've, I feel like, I feel like I'm the naughty kid in the, in the back of the bus. Hello, I'm Tom Christie and these are my children, Alan and Malva. How the hell did you just chill out after some of those episodes? Because it's, I'm sitting there and my housemates like, Max, are you okay? I'm like, no. Well, you know, there's a, there's a story that I've told quite a lot, but I don't mind repeating it. Was that want, no, 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 no. I don't want repeat stories. Ah, <laughs> well, I, there's a there's a backstory to this, which is that I got headhunted by Matt Roberts and Merrill for um to, to be in Outlander. You know, they they were like, we really want him. We would love him to play this part. So I get the breakdown of the part and it's Alan Christie and I'm reading it. And, they, and on the bottom of the email from Suzanne Smith, the casting director was like, they generally don't think anyone else can play this part as a compliment. Mm. And I read it like, what the hell? <laughs> like, and they were like, it could only be Alex. It can only be Alex to play Alan. <laughs> that was like, wow. Um, to answer your question, there is always, they basically cast very well. So having Mark Lewis Jones as, as Tom and lovely Jessica Reynolds as Malva, which I know you've had on the show. I thought the interview was great, by the way. She's so Thank lovely. Is that, is that, when you bring people together, you hope to God off camera that you get on. And what happened, what they, little did they know, but they got me and Mark and Jess together and we were just like three peas in the pod. The Christies have arrived, yes. They're a lot of fun. The actors that play the Christies, the Christies not so much. Can I help you? So even though we knew that the work that we were doing was incredibly dark and that we were bringing an energy into Atlanta. We knew that we 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 we, we would nickname ourselves the Adams family because we would just turn up at a door. We would just turn up at the door. The three of us turn up at the door, looking a bit like spacey. Um, so so when you know when you know that the job your job is to bring that energy and that there's a darkness coming per episode. Yeah. The only thing you can do to keep yourself sane is to joke off camera. We would we would play practical jokes on each other. We one time we decided to put loads of hot sauce on a on a little roll and me and Mark couldn't feel our tongue. We were about to do a really important scene and just just tried our best to try and um yeah smile before yeah. before you know before and action and then it was like oh my God. Yeah Alan. and I have to say Alan like, boy, he's not somebody I'd want to have dinner with. Actually, How dare you? How dare you? Alan, Alan would love to have dinner with you, Max. Listen, he's so serious and he's so, like, his face just looks so miserable. I don't think I ever saw him smile in season six once. Why he, would he smile? Why would he? Give me a reason to smile. Because he's alive. He's alive. Aha! Fair play, fair play. That's not the answer I was expecting. Yeah, he's alive, so he should smile. No, um... Which, as you can tell from my, I'm, I'm quite a live and um, upbeat and bubbly person. So yeah. it, it was, but it's nice to play those characters and they're misunderstood. I, I hate playing heroes. I, to be fair, I've, ne I've never, I've never said yes to playing the hero because I, I find them incredibly tedious. They're always right, and I love, as an actor, I just love the grey. I love not being yeah. it's one or the other. I love the fact that I feel like I can bring something to a role where, on my facial expression, people are going. Oh, does he mean this? Or is he thinking that? I love the questions and the mystery that brings. And Alan, Alan had that in spades. You know, I loved, I loved not being able, not doing anything. And by not doing anything, people were like, what is he up to? They really are a breath of fresh air. And uh, it's so fun to be able to work with new people. And uh, hopefully they enjoy working with us too. We just have a great time. It's just fun. Early on, you got whipped by the big man himself. I did, yeah. I mean, that is some way of joining the Outlanders season. Hey, new cast, and you get whipped by Sam. That was fun because I, I, I obviously read episode one and realised that there was a duality, a, a mirroring, yeah. if you will, that of him being him being stoically whipped with his shirt off in Ardsmere and taking it like such a 
like such a Jamie. Like, by the way, I love your energy. It's so infectious. We're supposed to be friends. You are go. Sorry, carry on. I love it. Anyway, so but like the fact that he's like being whipped and he's and he's just taking it and and it cut to me taking it and and I had to go and do ADR for it. You know, to go and do like the additional record and all the ADR was can Alan can Alan cry and whimper more? So I was like. You know, so basically to, to show to show the contrast of of Jamie, this you know almost okay. godlike human on on Earth, and then the weasel um, that was Alan. But no, I I mean, lovely introduction. Episode one and two, I felt like really did so well with introducing the characters, and then you know you realize that the show is not called uh, the Christies, which it should be, by the way. Yeah, I um, agree. Yeah, <laughs> um, but, um, but, um, but it's, you know, so so the Christies sort of disappear a while you know Malva's there and you know Tom's there and Alan's there but I feel like episode six seven and eight are yeah. um just ramping up the tension into you know into into a sort of crazy level of um you know basically we we I've said in very early on I was making I was making jokes earlier like oh the yeah. Christies bring destruction to the ridge and interviewers would be like mm-hmm, sure yeah. like yeah sure they do and I was like no no episode eight whoa you know so know. yeah we, yes Listen, I think there's such an exciting family. When you come into a, like a really established cast, um, let me know if the question's boring, by the way, I'm happy for you. <laughs> Don't worry, just, you, just won't know. you won't know, you won't know, I'll disappear. Any, like, you come in and they're like, oh my God, like this is a big show, big characters, Jamie, Claire, young Ian. But literally, I can't lie, I think the Christies have been such a big part of this season. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And we, I think the series needed a family like that. Yeah, they need. They needed. They basically what it does do is what it what it brilliantly does is it highlights the bond and the strength of Roger Mac, Bree, Jamie, and Claire. It absolutely by showing a dysfunctional family that are wrought with you know bad history and mystery. You put yeah. them opposite, you know, the, um, the Fraser's Ridge people, and and you can see well they look like amazing saints compared to. This. Listen, I. It's been an absolute joy yeah. bringing such a horrible part to the screen. It's, it's like you know, it's. It's funny. Sorry, when I was watching it, I was like, it felt like. Have you ever watched um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Yeah, I'm sure you have, right? Every version, but there's a bit where Charlie Bucket is sharing a bed with his his grandparents on one side, and then the rest, and he's and he's like, I will share my chocolate with whoever I want to share it with. And when you guys are in your little room, honestly, I feel like it's the Charlie Bucket smallest tiniest crappiest little house and I'm like then poor three people all you, should, you, you have to understand that some of the questions that I had to ask mm. um the directors which was you know so there's two there was two beds yes it was like and there's three of us and I was like so who's no. so who's who's who who so, you know, we had to sort of come to the agreement that Tom and Tom and Alan do top and tail, and Malva gets, Malva gets the sort of weird cot thing at the end. Also, like the the, the, yeah. the, the difference between <laughs> between <laughs> between the between Jamie and Claire's huge, beautifully built <laughs> mansion to what we call the Christie Shack, which was at one point in episode two didn't even have a front door. <laughs> You're like, oh like, my god. Okay. Look at it. Look at it, it's beautiful. I've got to ask you, yeah. because I've asked everyone else, and honestly, I just don't like Alan. I think he's a bit dodgy. He needs a lot of therapy. Bye, Max. Do you know, <laughs> do you know who the baby daddy is? Yeah, of course I do. You do, you do. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Jamie. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. Did, 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 I'm sorry if you hear that. But that, was, that, was, that was, did you hear that? That was my wife laughing in the background. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you, love. Bye. Bye. Listen, don't you dare! Don't, don't you dare no, no. accuse Jamie. He's like an angel. See, listen. That you're using the wrong terminology. It's not accuse. It's 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 question with a, with a, with the right moral compass. I absolutely come on. You're don't bring scary. me on this show. Don't bring me on this show, and don't agree with your guest. How dare you? Like Jamie is like the ultimate hero. He started off as a caveman in season one because I went backwards, and yeah. where he is now, you yeah. have no right to accuse. But him. also, that's the problem with this show is that people put Jamie and Claire on a pedestal. Yeah, they're not. They're not that's brilliant. Not- Jamie slept around. Jamie's. Like, have you seen Jamie? Of course, he's going to sleep with people. Come on. No, hold up. 
excuse me, the Cherokee night, there were two women, beautiful ladies that were trying to seduce him and young Ian had to come to the rescue. Yeah. Where was young Ian when he slept with Malva, eh? Huh? Questions? Oh, no. with that. Okay, so who's, the, who's if you're not gonna, we won't talk about who the baby daddy is because clearly you're not willing to accept that it's not Jamie. Um, <laughs> it's not like I'm not accepting it, it's just that I know, I know the truth and the truth is that it's, that it's Jamie, or as the fans say, Jamf. Jamf. J-A-M-F-F, -F. I don't know what Jamf means. All right, Jamf. who's the killer? Hmm? Who's the killer? I think it's you. You've got every reason, not you, you, but your well, character's got ev the most reason to be a killer. He was, first of all, he framed Claire. Claire's definitely not the killer. It's too obvious. This is Outlander. It's always something really odd and mind effing that's going to happen. So it can't be Claire ever. You framed her. Who's the killer? Why would I kill? Why would I kill? Little wee Malva? Malva? About your family's like reputation. Back then, those things mattered. Now, obviously, keep somebody alive is more important. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Um, what I will say is that we're not going to find out any of your answers, any of the questions by the end of it, by the end of season six. Which it's, is so it, it, Which is wonderful, by the way, because sometimes they shows like to wrap everything up in a bow. But no, no, we're no, when that's not gonna. You're, there's gonna be no happy answers or or any answers. No need for that now, isn't there? It's been a horde of your daughter. There's a there's a cool lot of fans. They've set fan accounts. I just I adore them because, like I said at the start of this interview, I I engage with them. And yeah. they engage back. They do raffles. They raise money for charities. I'm I'm all for that. And if it means that just being in shows like Sanderton, Versailles, Merlin, or Outlander makes people escape and in, and and love the show or me, and it means that they forget what's happening in their lives at the moment. Great. That, that's my and job done. Also, ride or die. Nobody can mess with you. They will come for people. Love it. Not yes. that I'm encouraging you to do that, guys. But no, but it's like fisty cuts. You come for Al, you come in for them. You know? Yeah. DMC says on Twitter, hello, says, why was that baby coffin so damn big? Listen, I didn't know. Listen, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't make it. I mean, I made it on the show, but basically it's a prop. It's a prop master. He says, right, this is what you think. Yeah. Susan says, Alan has done his fair share of crying this season. Yeah. How as an actor do you induce crying on demand? That's a great question. That is purely emotional, uh, at, um, environmental stuff. So as a director and as an actor, you walk on set and you talk very openly about what's needed, you know? And I was think, and I, I'm not, sometimes I'm honest, some actors won't do this, but I'm like, do you want tears? Sometimes you can show emotion without crying, sometimes it's too much. But I always feel like for Alan, he gives over a sense that he's the big man, but actually he's very, very weak. So I think anytime he can cry and show some sort of chink in his armor, I think it's actually a really good thing. And I'm, yeah, it's not, it's not easy, but I feel like once you, once you talk to a director and the script is good and the environment helps you, it's very easy for me to, to do it, actually. It actually quite is. But, it, but it also, if the environment's not great and they say, could you cry? It would take me a long time. So it's, it's, it's both. No. Also, oh. I have to just add, most characters are never all good or all bad. So even though I'm joking about Alan, I think yeah. most of these characters have been traumatised in some way. That's why they are who they are and why yeah. they do some of the wicked things that they do. So, yeah, I think that's really beautiful about this series because it's, it's the same with humans. No one is sure. always good and nobody's always bad. Okay, Dawn says, I would just like to know what you think Alan really wants in life. I guess maybe he's jealous of the Frasers. Yeah, I think you're right. From this interview, there's a lot of jealousy coming through. But it's still bad for him. I think, I think Alan, Alan wants peace. He wants peace and he wants his own little, he wants his own little bit of the world. He wants to be out of his sh dad's shadow. He wants to be his own person and he wants a little bit of his own land. And I just, I think he wants peace. I think there's, a, there's been a lot of hardship, which you will find out in the history of the Christie's about Alan. I think Alan and Malva have had a terrible upbringing. And I think yeah. he's been promised this new this golden cool. life on the ridge. And actually, it hasn't turned out that way, you know? Somebody yeah. said, I can't see their name. Does it, do you wear briefs or boxers? <laughs> I, I wear boxers. Boxers. Okay, I, wear boxers. I, I know this is random, but why do guys wear briefs? Do any of your friends wear briefs? I think they're no, the most no. unattractive I think, thing. I, think it's an, I, th I want to say it's an American thing. 
in the UK, no one I no one I know wears tighty whities. We all wear. Well, them. I spoke to somebody about it in detail, and he said to me because he wears a suit to work that if you wear the tight ones, they fit nicer on trousers, and that's why guys wear them because boxers are gonna you're gonna see the line. I'd like to meet. I'd like to meet that guy and slap him in the face. Next question. <laughs> okay, there's too many. They love you. My final thing is this. Yeah. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure watching you on Outlander, and I'm super excited to see what else happens. If you were going to sum up a typical day with the gang, behind the scenes, I see you lot do all sorts of crap, and it was really nice to see Malva with her, uh, Jessica with their fake bump. Yeah. You, you know, what's it like? Because it seems like such fun. It, do you know what we have? We do have a we do have a blast. That's what I was saying. That the 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 story is so dark that any moment of brevity and lightness we can we meet up we go for nice food together we do like eating and food but what we do is we it's weird but you can never take us away from the work so when we meet up even though we spent all day together as the christies yeah we'll still meet up in the evening and then talk about the christies it's 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 a non-stop there's no break from it do you love katrina as much as me i adore her yeah i do actually i think she's wonderful i'll tell you what um certain shows have company leaders you know the number one on the call sheet yeah and that dictates whether they know it or not, you know, I was number one with one number two on the side, but yeah. your energy on set dictates how the crew are, how the rest of the cast are, how the guest cast are, how, you know, makeup, hair, your energy is, they look to you because you are, whether you know it or not, a company leader. And I would say that Sam and Kat are the most wonderful company leaders. Oh, Alex, literally you flipping rock. You have the best energy. It's infectious. We have um, to do the max. Let's do yeah. this again when it's not about Outlander. Let's, I'll be yeah. back. Thank you so much. Cheers, guys. Lots of love. Bye, Thanks, Max. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.